Smith here with one more flipped classroom math video for your enjoyment. Three tips. First, you can speed up or slow down the playback if that helps you follow along. Second, you can pause any time to catch up with your notes or think a little harder. Lastly, you could turn on the captions, which will show you my words on the screen below. Today's topic is finding obtuse angles with the sign row. Now you may have already bumped into this issue and it gives you a kind of a strange answer. And if you compare with like an answer key or the answers in the back of your textbook, you're gonna find that your answers aren't correct. But you check your work and it looks like you did everything right. So let's do one of those and then I'll show you why your answer didn't match the back and I'll show you how to make it match the back. Okay, so here we go. Here's our triangle. And yep, we're being asked to find theta, and theta is obviously obtuse. Remember, obtuse angles are bigger than 90. Okay, so obviously that one is bigger than 90. So we can use our sine rule. We can do um, this side over the sine of 38. Remember, sine rule is length of side over sine of opposite angle. So that would be 20 over sine 38, and that equals 32 over sine theta. Now, the, the most thorough, easiest to keep straight way of dealing with two fractions equal to each other is to first cross multiply. So I'm gonna multiply 20 times sine theta. So I get 20 times sine theta, and then I bring down my equals, and then I cross multiply this way, equals 32 times sine 38. Now I need to get sine theta alone, so I'm just gonna divide both sides by 20. 20 there, 20 there, these cancel, and I get sine theta equals 32 times sine 38 over 20. Now I'm gonna use my inverse trigonometry. If I know that sine theta equals all that, then the sine inverse of all that equals theta. So let's write that step sine inverse of 32 times sine 38 over 20 equals theta. Now, if you're riding along with your calculator, let's pause the video right now, do that calculation, and find out what theta is. All right, so if you plug this all in, you're gonna get 31.5. Yay, I got my angle. Flip into the back of the book and look at the answers and check it, and the answer is not 31.5. Now, if you do the reasonableness test on your answer, you don't need to look in the back of your book to know that something's not right because 31.5 is definitely an acute angle. It's not a terribly big angle, but our theta here, that's definitely obtuse. This angle on this diagram is bigger than 90, but my result is not. So there's something going on here. And you want to do that reasonableness test. If you just go down the road with these kind of problems and you find an obtuse angle and you circle that, you're not going to get all the points. Okay, so what's going on here? Here it is. Is that I can draw another triangle that has the same measurements that we're looking at here, but has a different theta. Now watch this. Okay, so check it out. I have my 20 and my 32. So here's my 20 and my 32, except what I did is I just rotated this 32 all the way out until this angle became 38 again. So this triangle has the same measurements as this one. I've got my 20, my 32, and my 38, which is in the same position. So suddenly I have two triangles that fit this diagram. And so here's what your calculator does. Your calculator always finds the smallest angle that works for the ratio that you put in. So this ratio, what the calculator assumed was that you had this triangle. And this triangle, this angle is 31.5 degrees. So it told you the result for this one, not this one. Okay, so here's the secret. Your obtuse angle is always going to be 180 minus this one. So here's the thing, when you do your reasonableness test and you go, whoops, I got an acute angle, I know it's obtuse, I'm gonna subtract my acute from 180 and I'll get my angle. So 180 minus 31.5 is 
is going to be your obtuse angle. All right, so when I do my math on that one, I get 148.5 as my solution for this angle. And now, if I was working out of the book and I needed to check my answer, I'd go in there and I'd see, and this would line up just fine with the answer that they provide in your textbook. All right, here's another one to try. But I'm gonna give you a tough task. Before we do the calculations on this, I want you to draw the triangle that lines up with this one, but has an acute angle where theta is instead of an obtuse. So maybe look back at your notes, look at how we drew that second triangle in the last example, draw this one in your notes, and then maybe right next to it, draw the version of it that has the same measures, 22 and eight, with a 16 degree angle here, but has an acute theta instead of an obtuse theta. All right, I just did that for you, and I find it, it's a little tough to visualize how that works, but I stuck with it and I think I got it. So what I did is I took my, I first I drew my eight, that's the same there. And then I took my 22 and I rotated it down. So this is supposed to still be 22. And then this side just comes down so that I still get a pointy, a small 16 degree angle there. And now I have an acute theta as opposed to an obtuse theta. But I have the same triangle, or I have the same measurements on what actually is a different triangle. All right, so now let's use the sine rule. Go ahead and pause the video, do the sine rule, and figure out what this theta is. So see if you can do that. All right, let's see how you did. Here's my sine rule, plug in step. I've got eight over sine 16 equals 22 over sine theta. I did all my number crunching. Check your work, make sure you got that. And what I get is theta equals 49.3. I do my reasonableness check and it ain't right. So then I subtracted 49.3 and I got 130.7. And then at the end of all that, I label my diagrams. So this one is the 130.7, and that's the 49.3. Same math for both of those. So the thing to remember is that when you take the inverse sine to find an angle, your calculator will find the smallest angle that satisfies what you're doing. So in, in this case, there are two angles. There's two triangles that meet these conditions. So your calculator is just not going to give you the second one, just the first one. So that's why you have to do this when you're finding obtuse angles with the sine rule. Woohoo! Alright, now that you've watched the video, take a minute and jot down any remaining questions so you can bring them to our next class. Also remember you can watch the video again, maybe that will deepen your understanding. If you like the video, please click like and subscribe.